Hi, welcome to my video about the best usage of older style heating controls. This picture is of a programmer, a Drayton. So make sure your time is correct and also the day. You won't be able to set the date on this one. This will then allow the boiler permission to burn fuel to make heat, to heat up the radiators at certain times and also make hot water at certain times. What decides whether it does that or not is the thermostat on the hot water tank and the room thermostat if you have one. When the air temperature and the hot water temperature is at required levels, this stops the demand for heat. Here's the room thermostat. The room thermostat should ideally be set anywhere between say 18 and 21. Government recommended temperatures for bedrooms are, is 18 degrees and government recommended temperature for a lounge is 21 degrees. Obviously, if you can have the temperature a few degrees cooler than this, this will save you money. With your programmer set correctly, you could have um, permission for the boiler to make heat in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon and then the evening. If you set your thermostat to 18 degrees, the heat will only be released if the temperature of the air drops below 18 degrees and the programmer gives the boiler permission to fire up so they work together. Here we have a cylinder thermostat. This is connected to the boiler and the programmer. So the boiler is allowed to uh, create heat and heat up the hot water if the programmer allows it to and if the water inside the tank is below the temperature the thermostat is set to. The thermostat can be adjusted using a small Julius screwdriver flathead and um, the ideal temperature for this is 60 degrees. The, this way the water reaches the tap at above 50 degrees which reduces the risks of legionellas. Above 60 degrees can increase the risk of a buildup of lime scale. So 60 is the opt optimal temperature for storing water in a tank. As you can see, this tank has uh, l large levels of insulation which holds the heat in. If no water is used, the water in the tank should remain warm. And then the next day, it doesn't have to heat the whole tank back up again, as the thermostat tells the boiler that the water is already hot. The third control that's often overlooked is the TRV, thermostatic radiator valve. This is basically a spring-loaded tap. If set to zero or frost setting, the flow to the radiator is restricted. If put on six, the flow to the radiator is wide open. If set two, three, four or five, the flow is then spring-loaded and the spring expands and contracts due to room temperature. Now this is great for um, assigning the flow of water or heat to different rooms. So a room that gets cold ideally should be set to six and a room that can warm up and stay quite warm should, or have another form of heating should be set to three or four. If you set it to three or four the spring is then loaded. As the heat the room warms up the, the spring will expand closing off the valve, so thus sending water to other radiators in the part of the house. You should have these taps on most of your radiators. Often though, the, the room with the uh, thermostat won't have one, or there'll be a radiator without one of these. This is called the bypass. Just in case ever someone shuts all the valves down, the pump won't then burn out. Sometimes the bypass is built into the boiler or it's just a radiator without a thermostatic radiator valve. So rooms that get warm set to two or three so the spring is loaded and can shut the radiator down when it gets too warm uh, such as kitchens. So when an oven's on for a long time the valve can then close and then send water to other parts of the house that aren't as warm and rooms that are always cold leave on six and putting it on zero would be a good idea for something like a conservatory that you don't want to heat it at a particular time of the year. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like.